Now we're going to show you what you need to do to complete your first assignment. So if you remember, your first assignment is to take three pictures. One picture that's underexposed, one picture that's overexposed, and one picture that's the correct exposure. We're going to show you what settings you need to use on your camera in order to do that. I have my camera on a tripod here. Right now that's just so I can take some good video and keep the camera still. It's also because I'm the only person taking the video. I'm actually using three tripods right now. One for the camera taking the video. And I have another tripod where I've got a mic that I'm using for external sound. Although you can take great pictures with minimal equipment, equipment does help you with some of the trickier spots, especially things like night photography where you have to use a very slow shutter speed. A tripod is one of the pieces of equipment that can help you get a much better shot. Now we're going to show you exactly what you need to do to take the three pictures that are required for your first photographic assignment. Okay, so we're zoomed in on my camera screen right now, which will give us a lot of information. And right now with the display I've got, we can see just the shutter speed, which is 1 30th of a second. The aperture, which is right now uh, f4.5, that's your f-stop. And you can see there's this little meter on the right. And notice this button over here um, this gives you some other menu items that you can access let's look at the display first okay so if I click the display here um, that's just giving me a little uh, level so if I tilt my camera see it gets out of level and cycle through some more this gives me a histogram. A histogram gives you a lot of great information. You can see that there's not very much information over here to the right. That does need, mean that we should bump up our exposure a bit, just like the meter is telling us. Let's just bump it up a little bit and you'll see what happens. Okay, we brought it to zero. And what, what we just did was we changed the shutter speed from 1 30th of a second to 1 15th of a second. 15th of a second. We've moved our histogram so we don't have so much missing information to the right and we can see there are little meters on zero which that actually means that the picture is properly exposed. If I hit the display again I get this setting which really tells me everything about the camera, all the different things that it's set on. Um, that tells me it's in manual mode. Okay, I'm shooting raw um, this is actually telling you the meter, meter um, type of metering system I'm using. Uh, I've got things on here like the focus system I'm using, etc. Okay, at this point we want to keep it simple. So I'm going to set the screen. So we've got our shutter speed, our aperture, and our meter. And I'm going to put on the histogram too, so you can see how when we change these things, the histogram will change. All right, before I actually take our picture, I want to set our white balance. And we can look at our screen over here. Right now, it's on automatic white balance. And until you get a little bit more familiar, using your white balance, I'd recommend that you stay there. Um, if we put it down here, that's for sunny day. This is a shady day. You can watch kind of how the colors on the screen change a little bit. Um, this is a cloudy day. So it's had that turn blue. That's for uh, in indoor incandescent lighting. And then finally, though, down here, we've got fluorescent lighting, flash, uh, and then you can set in a lot of cameras the color temperature yourself. Or about white balance later. I'm going to set it at automatic white balance right now. The next thing we're going to access is our ISO, which means International Standards Organization, by the way. 
which is just the organization responsible for standardizing a whole bunch of different things. Okay, so I'm going to press the button to set my ISO. And we see over here, we've got a bunch of different settings. Okay, 100 ISO would be if we've got pretty strong outdoor lighting, we might want to use that. 200 would also be good for outdoors. 400 may be a cloudier day outdoors. And if you'll notice as I'm changing my ISO, that screen was getting um, brighter. And let's actually select the 400. And we'll see that our um, histogram has moved too far to the right, meaning we're overexposed. And if we look at our exposure setting down here, we'll see that that's also moved to being overexposed. Now in manual mode, what I'm going to do first is, is set my aperture. And I'll show you how to do that in a second. And then the manual mode will change my shutter speed by just moving this dial out here. Again, this may be different on different cameras, so read your manual. When I take a picture with my Sony in manual mode, the first thing I have to do is set the aperture. So I put it on A and set it on whatever aperture I want to use. I change the aperture again by accessing this dial over here. Once I've got it on the aperture I want, I put it back into manual mode. And again, I can use the wheel under the shutter release to change my speed. got our ISO at 400. That's a pretty good ISO for a cloudy day. If you want to take an action shot, you might, might want to make it higher. Hit the button. Now we're ready to take our picture. So the first thing I'm going to do is set the aperture. So I go to the mode dial and put it at A. I then use the wheel over on the other side. I hit the shutter just halfway to bring up my screen. Go to the wheel on the other side. And let's try doing an aperture of 5.6. Okay, hit the shutter release halfway and it sets it. Since this is in aperture priority right now, the camera is going to set the speed to give us a properly exposed picture. And when our meter is at zero, we've got a properly exposed picture. Now I'm going to put my camera style in manual mode. Halfway press the shutter release to bring up the menu. And we will see that since we just had our camera in aperture priority and we haven't had any changes since then, that our camera's meter is at that zero setting, meaning that our, any picture that we take right now should be correctly exposed. Now this isn't a particularly interesting picture. I've set it up more so we can ideally see the screen. But I'm just going to click this right now. Okay, there's our properly exposed picture. Now I want to underexpose our picture. So, you can see my meter right here. Um, if you see a little minus, if we go to the left, we're underexposing. Again, we just kind of go on that dial over here. Right now I'm underexposing it by one stop. We see that our camera speeds at one one hundredth of a second. And we've also seen that our histogram has shifted over. Watch the histogram. I'm going to put it back to the correct exposure. And we see that our histogram has more information in the middle and isn't really missing stuff at the T 
two ends. Actually, if we look at the histogram, we might want to expose this particular picture a little bit. Yeah, I like I like this pic the look of the histogram when I overexpose it by just a little bit. Here's our underexposed stop shot. Here's by one stop. Here's by two stops, and you can see our screen got darker. Our histogram changed. There's our underexposed shot. And now let's do our overexposed one. Okay, now the histogram can be really useful. As I said, if I put this up just another click, it seems like I'm getting a brighter picture and I'm not having any issues with what we call clipping. But now watch as I put this up two spots. And we'll see our screen got washed out. We'll see there's very little information in the histogram over to the left and it's kind of going off the charts over here on the right. That's what's known as highlight clipping. And you want to always avoid that. Using a histogram in your meter is one way to do that. Um, so this is showing you one stop of overexposure. It, when you look at the histogram, it's not really that overexposed. Let's go all the way up to two and we'll take a shot now. Okay, those are our three shots. One overexposed, one underexposed, one the correct exposure. Now, ISO, shutter speed, and aperture are all related. So, how'd this end up getting overexposed? Well, because now we're leaving the shutter open a lot longer. Remember, our aperture has been staying the same here. Now watch as we go to underexposed and look at what's changing, our shutter speed. Now, could we get a correctly exposed picture taking this at one one hundredth of a second? Yeah, we could. Okay, let's go back up to our dial and change our aperture. Let's see without changing the ISO if I can get this to work at one one hundredth of a second. And what I'm going to have to do is open the aperture wider. Now, just to really confuse you, as you open a, a, the aperture wider, the F number or F stop goes down. So a wide aperture is actually a lower F stop than a small aperture. So right now I've got, I haven't changed the ISO, that's still set at 400. And I can use 100th of a second shutter speed if I bring my aperture, if I open my aperture a little bit wider, to an f-stop of 3.5. So there's another properly exposed picture. Now let's see what happens if we change the camera's ISO. So we're going to increase the ISO to 800. And we can see right off the bat when we come back to the screen that the same aperture, 5.6, we've increased our shutter speed. I'm going to put this back on manual. And we can see that now with a shutter speed of only 1 one hundredth of a second, our picture's really exposed because we've doubled the ISO. If we want to get our exposure right now in manual mode, you'll see that we'll bring the shutter speed up to um, a, second, a second ago. And this just shows you how it changes according to lighting. It was 250th of a second. Now it's somewhere between 1 250th and 1 320th of a second. Since we're working with our metering system down here, there's one more thing I want to show you. So your camera's evaluating the light in the scene and by the computer telling you whether or not the picture's the correct exposure. That's how cameras work nowadays. Everything's built into the camera and it pretty much does everything for you. But there are several ways you can meter a particular scene. Since we're currently looking at our camera's meter, it's worth talking about how the camera meters your picture. And most 
bridge cameras and DSLRs will have a way you can actually change the way the camera evaluates your particular scene. Okay, I'm going to change my display mode. Okay, and that gives me all that information on the outside part of the screen. And my meter mode is right here. To access the meter button, I'm going to hit this FN button. And that lets us actually cycle through all of these display items, menu items on the sides. Okay, our meter mode is right here. So I'm going to highlight that, hit the autofocus, and it'll show you the different metering modes. Right now I have it on multi-segment metering. So that evaluates the whole scene. If I want to take pictures of a bird or an animal, I might want to just meter my subject. In that case, I'm going to use spot metering. And maybe I want to put more weight on my subject. So I'm taking per pictures of a person. I want the center of my screen to be the thing that is meter, metered the most correctly. Um, but I want to still have a pretty good metering of the whole scene. In that case, I'm going to use center-weighted metering. Today's lecture concentrated on what all those dials on your camera did. And you really don't have to know all the dials yet. I've taught you the most important ones, but you should read your manual and figure out what your camera does. I'm just going to show you some of the scene settings. So I'm going to switch my mode dial over to scene. Okay. And this will cycle us through some common scene settings that you'll see on most cameras. So portrait mode, if you want to take a picture of a person or animal close up. Sports or action. And basically what sports or action is going to do is give you the highest possible shutter speed in a given situation by balancing out your uh, ISO. If you have too high an ISO, you end up getting more digital noise. So it's going to try to keep that down if it can and give you as fast a shutter speed as possible. Macro mode, which is simply for close-up shooting. Landscapes. And what landscapes want to do is give you as uh, small an aperture as possible. We'll talk about why later, but that gives you um, the best depth of, depth of field which means more of your picture is in focus. You have sunset mode, which bumps up some of the colors on your camera. And also, if you take a picture of a sunset, your camera isn't going to properly expose. It's going to tend to overexpose the sunset, so this is going to expose it just a little less. Night shots. Um, handheld night shots, night portrait, etc. And then some weird color things. Okay, so again, you can fool with your camera and see what kind of scene settings you have. I personally don't use scene settings. I use simply setting my camera's aperture or shutter speed along with ISO for the particular purpose at hand. If I want to take pictures of my cats, I might set a higher ISO, knowing I'm going to have a little more digital noise, so I can get a, as fast as possible a shutter speed. If I'm going to take a landscape, I'm going to set my um, aperture as small as possible. And if I'm using a tripod, I can set a smaller aperture and let the shutter stay open longer and if I'm hand holding something, in which case, just so you don't get camera shake, you need to uh, get a little bit faster shutter speed. Now there are a couple of settings that I do use. Uh, newer cameras have some cool features like high dynamic range shots 
And really, those are taking multiple pictures in one shot, what you, what you think is one shutter release, and using the camera's computer to put them together to give you a picture that's got um, more dynamic range. Um, in other words, more detail in both the highlights and the shadows than you would get with just one shot. The other setting I use is there's another picture for, hand, for handheld night shots that also takes multiple pictures and puts them together in the camera to cut down on the digital noise. That's a useful setting. And then sometimes you want to take a panoramic shot. And again, most cameras now have a panoramic mode where you can stitch your pictures together. So those can be fairly useful. But if I'm just if I'm taking a single picture, I just set the camera's shutter speed, aperture, and ISO according to my particular needs at that time.